All right, so if you want FPS like this, go ahead and watch this full guide here to make sure that you get the best FPS possible. We're not going through the regular stuff today, guys. You guys already seen a thousand guides that absolutely don't work for you guys. So we're gonna take a deep dive and make sure that you guys have the best FPS possible. I'm gonna go way more in depth than normal if you want just a regular guide then you could go and search up all those rest of you know like call of duty guides out there that gives you the same exact settings that don't increase your fps at all this guide is for advanced users who really want to get an fps boost and i'm going to show you why you need a sense quality optimization there and why you should visit sensequality.com because i'm going to provide you so much fps that you're going to be like wow if they're giving me this much fps with this guide alone I wonder what they can do with the optimization there or a PC tune. So go ahead and visit that website there after you're done with this guide. All right, now let's get into getting you the best FPS in Call of Duty Black Ops 7 here. So the first thing we're going to start with is we're going to start with out of game settings here. So ignore all of this stuff right here. Let's go ahead and go out of game. So basically, we're going to make sure that you have the best out of game profile here. And the way you could find it is you would go to your file folder, right? You would go to this PC, local disk, you type in Activision. And then when you type in Activision, you should be able to find the profile that you're looking for here. Or what you can do to make it easier is go to this PC, local disk, right? And then you're gonna go to users. Um, Corneal is my user, for example. So app data, you're gonna look for that. We're gonna scroll down here, app data, okay? Then we're gonna go to local. Then we're gonna go to Activision. And then we're gonna go to Call of Duty. And then we're gonna go to players. And that's where you're gonna find all your settings here. So basically what I did already for you guys, that way you guys don't have to waste a whole bunch of time watching a whole bunch of videos and stuff like that, is I went ahead and gave you the best configs possible with the link down in the description. So all you're gonna have to do is go to the link and you're gonna download these files right here. You're gonna delete all the ones in here. You're just gonna delete it. And you're gonna copy the, all the ones in the link and you're just gonna paste it in here and you should be good. And that's gonna do all your in-game settings for you. It's gonna do a little bit of the out-of-game settings for you and make sure that you're good with that. Before we go in-game though, let's go ahead and review a little bit more settings here. So let's go to basically make sure that your game bar is off right so you're just going to search game bar make sure that's off you're going to search game mode you're going to make sure that game mode is on guys so that should be good right there you're going to go to transparency you're going to make sure transparency is off windows fixed screen blur make sure that's off on windows 10 and background apps windows 11 doesn't have it but i'll show you a way to get through that and then remove startup so basically you're going to disable all the startups that you don't need and make sure that that's good here now I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of secret sauce here. I don't give this to everybody. So, you guys are the only ones to do this. So, you're gonna search up PowerShell, you're gonna run it as an administrator. I have this code down below here, guys, okay? So basically, with this code, right? You're gonna see like Chris Titus slash win something. You're gonna copy and paste that into your PowerShell after you run it as an administrator. Boom. So now, it's going to pull up a screen for you guys to actually configure your computer. So this is pretty cool. So basically you're gonna go to tweaks, you're gonna go to standard. You're gonna run those tweaks, right? Run down here and you should be good. Then you're gonna go to updates, you're gonna go to security settings. This is the key guys. This is gonna make sure that after this update or after this like optimization video or after an optimization that you get from sensequality.com, nothing's gonna change. So your PC is gonna stay stable for at least a year or two before you have to change anything. So that's gonna be pretty good. So then after you do that, you're just gonna exit out here. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to choose a power plan. We're gonna search that up. Now for Horizons, you're gonna use Balance. So if you have a 9800X 3D, if you have a 5950X 3D, if you have a Ryzen CPU, you always wanna use Balance so you can get the most FPS there. That way you can allow your cores to cool down and ramp up and you get more FPS and less latency there. Now for Intel's 12900K, 13900K, 14900K, you're gonna use 
ultimate performance, which you could also do in that guide I pr provided for you, like that Chris Titus guide. You can just put ultimate performance there and you should be good. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the NVIDIA control panel, guys. We're gonna do all the out of game settings first because all these videos are showing you in game settings and those like, you could get those anywhere. But the out of game settings are very important, guys, because this actually makes an FPS difference. So this is why you wanna watch a full video and make sure you subscribe and like for more content like this so we can get you the best FPS possible here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to NVIDIA Video control panel. I know AMD users, don't worry, I'm gonna make a video specifically for you guys soon. So, in video control panel, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to power management mode. You're gonna put that to prefer max performance, guys. You're gonna go to shader cache, put that at 100 gigabytes. You're gonna go to texture filtering quality. You're gonna put that at high performance there. And then you're gonna put threaded optimization on on. And then you're gonna go to change resolution. A lot of people forget to do this. So like if you have a 1440p monitor, you wanna make sure that's at 1440p there. And then with the refresh rate, guys, you wanna make sure that matches your monitor. Now with G-Sync, this is a little bit weird, guys. So like stick with me here. So if you want a smooth game and you don't stream or anything like that, and you don't mind a little bit of latency, then you just enable G-Sync. If you care about latency, if you don't care about your game feeling like as smooth, then you're gonna disable G-Sync there and that should be good as well. So that's all your NVIDIA settings right there for you. So we're gonna exit out of that. Now I'm gonna put a link down below where you could download the controller overclock, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to overclock your controller here. So in that link, you should see um, a folder called HID USBF, right? You're gonna click on that, you're gonna go to drivers. You're gonna go to setup, you're gonna run that as an administrator there, guys. And then you're gonna go to all. Now with all, you're gonna see all this stuff over here. I'm just gonna act like this is my controller right here, okay? So usually for PS4 controllers, let me just show you real quick. PS4, PS5 controllers, you're gonna look for one millisecond here. So what you're gonna do is go to USB, you're gonna see like game controller right here, filter on, right? Press yes. Um, You're gonna go to default, you're gonna put that at a thousand. You're gonna press install service and then you should be good here, guys. Xbox controllers, same exact thing. You should see Xbox controller right here and you should be good. Now, let me tell you a little bit of secret, guys. Um, If you're on Xbox controller, like I used to use the Elite controller, it's literally right on my desk. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, you want to get a Fly Digi controller, right? And I could put a link down below, but let me just show you guys. You want to get a Fly Digi controller if you like the Xbox feel. So that's going to be pretty good right there. I'll put a link down below to that, but you would want to get something like this, guys. So I just put it on the screen there. Probably like the Apex or the Vader is pretty good. And that's actually one millisecond. If you use an Xbox controller, like an Elite controller or a regular Xbox controller, guys, on PC, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage because PS4 controllers are running at 0.5 milliseconds one millisecond while yours after you overclock it is running at four to five milliseconds so for all my xbox fans out there that's a little tip for you guys there all right so the next thing guys is where you download your game here so a lot of you guys download the game on steam why a lot of you guys download the game on xbox game pass why Guys, you want to use Battle.net. Battle.net is the max FPS go-to platform for Call of Duty. If you are playing Call of Duty, you better have purchased it on Battle.net. If you didn't, it's okay. You always got next year. But I'm telling you guys, when we optimize the computer, this is why optimizations and PC tunes are so important. Because when we optimize the computer, this guy had a $5,000 computer, right? He didn't know why it was crashing. He didn't know why he was getting low FPS compared to all his peers, right? So he was literally playing the game on Steam. He had 30 FPS less on Steam than he had on Battle.net. So he was getting like 350 FPS on Battle.net, 320 to 300 on Steam, and it was crashing more consistently on Steam. So if you're getting a lot of dev errors, if you're getting a lot of just FPS dips in general, you really want to go to Battle.net, guys, because that's going to save you a lot of headache. Trust me, guys, like this happened to me before. I was one that bought the game on Steam before. I know how it feels. You just want to pay the price and just go with that now. I'm telling you, it's going to be worth it there. All right, so now we're going to go to in-game settings, guys. So first, controllers, controller users. You're going to go to uh, controller. You're going to go to aiming. You're going to go to aiming advanced settings. If you want really, really good 
aim and consistent bullet registration you're gonna press instant right here and you should be good and then you're gonna back out of that now for pc players and make sure you don't skip over this stuff guys because i still got something special for you guys at the end pc players you're gonna go to full screen exclusive boom you want it on that you want your display resolution to match your monitor screen refresh rate 360 hertz uh nvidia reflex low latency let me tell you guys about this one okay so if you are CPU bounded, you want to use on plus boost. If you are GPU bounded, you want to use on. The way that you know if you are CPU or GPU bounded is you run the benchmark right there. It's literally in the game, guys. You could see exactly what's what your CPU or GPU bound is. And you're going to see, it's going to say like, hey, your GPU is 98% of the bottleneck. That means that you're GPU bounded because the bottleneck's all on your GPU side. So that's when you use NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency on, right? If you use, if you see the CPU, right, FPS is low, CPU utilization or CPU bottleneck is 100%, that's when you go on plus boost. And that's how you determine which one to use there. A lot of people get confused about that. That's exactly what you have to do. VSync off, never use that. Custom frame rate limit, if you don't get over 300 FPS, right, or close to 300 FPS, if you don't even have a monitor that goes over 300 FPS, what you should do is go to custom, right? You should put the gameplay custom frame rate limit at 240, right, if that's your monitor. And then the menu custom frame rate, put it at 60, put the uh, out of game frame rate at 30. The reason why you want to do this, guys, is because imagine you have a car, right? And you're just pressing the gas pedal all the time. The car is going to eventually overheat, guys. What you want to do in between games is make sure that your PC cools down so the next game is going to feel more consistent there. Have you ever had those, like, problems where you go into a game and it feels good and then the next game it feels a little bit more off and then the next game it feels a little bit more off and then the next game you're getting dev ears and then that's because most people don't let their pc cool down so this is going to prevent a lot of issues especially if you uh, game for more than two to three hours you want to make sure to limit your frames here because if you don't even have over a 240 hertz monitor, then I'm not sure why you would put it on unlimited anyway. You're just wasting resources. You're wasting frames. You're making the PC more consistent there and work harder for no reason. Now, if you have a max out PC, I'm talking 9950X 3D, 5090, everything on it. Don't even worry about it. Put that bad boy on unlimited and you should be good. Now, you could copy all these settings here. These are really not important hdr you always want to disable that all right so let's see here so now this is where we get to the nitty-gritty here so you want to copy exactly these settings guys so resolution 100 upscaling fidelity fidelity cast strength 90 right you don't want to use dlss guys unless you're really struggling with frames because dlss it increases your fps but it also increases your delay the whole point of getting a $5,000 PC, a $4,000 PC, is to decrease your overall delay, not increase it. So that's why you don't wanna use DLSS unless like you're literally on a low end PC there. Next, uh, VRAM scale target, you want this at 85, so that should be good there. Texture resolution, you want all this to be low. A lot of people tell me, hey Cornell, why are we putting all of these settings on low if I'm buying a $5,000 PC? Because a lot, if you wanna put it on high guys, what you could do is, you can do uh, ultra here, you can do ultra here, and that should be good, right? If you want like a blend between quality and performance, that's fine. But the reason why people buy $4,000 to $5,000 PCs, the reason why professional players buy those kind of PCs is to have the lowest input delay possible so you can have the best advantage possible. So that means that you're running low settings, right? And you have really fast parts or components in your PC, so you have the best of both worlds. So when you, when an enemy pops up right in front of you, you're going to be able to see them before they see you here. That's the whole point of that. Next, you're just going to set all of these to low or off. You could copy all of these here, guys. These are really not that important. And then uh, you could copy these. Now for controllers, you want it, the FOV to be between 103 and 107 is a sweet spot. So that should be good there. Field of view, uh, that's all personal preference there. Uh, this is 50-50, inverted flashbangs on, save your eyes. If you want to test out 
your settings, you use the benchmark tool, and that's like really helpful there. So after this, like comment down below, like what be what your benchmarks are looking at with your CPU and your GPU. That way, other people could get an idea of where their benchmarks should be there. So go ahead and do that, guys. And then the next thing you guys want to do is open up or download MSI Afterburner here. So basically with MSI Afterburner, I'm going to show you exactly what to do here. You're going to put your core count at 75. You're going to put your memory clock at 300. You're going to put your core voltage all the way up. You just like slide it up like that, right? You just click on 300 there, right? You max out your power. You press yes. You save it to number five, right? And check mark it. You're going to press this Windows key. Make sure this Windows key is looking blue like that. You see how it looks blue there? You want that to be the option there. And then you want to go to settings. You want to go to start with Windows. Start minimize. And then after you save that, you're going to go to apply and OK. And boom, you just overclocked your GPU. You just got free FPS. No problem there. Now, this is a really, really safe overclock, guys. If you want the max performance out of your PC, you really want to visit sensequality.com because that's where professionals like me can help you get the max out of your PC there. Well, I hope that helps, guys. I hope you have the best FPS possible. And if you have any questions, leave them down below. And all the links I uh, described is down below there. If you want to get more FPS, visit the link on the screen right here, sensequality.com. Get more FPS. Get less lag. Make sure you already spent four to five thousand dollars on your PC. What is another one to three hundred dollars going to do? It's going to make sure that you're actually utilizing those components in the right manner there. So that should be good there. I hope this helps, guys, and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day here. You guys take care now.